Hi there, it's Mr. Damon, and I hope that you had a stupendous day. Stupendous is a great sounding word that simply means awesome. Do you know that we do something each night in our family at dinner called highs and lows? This is how it works. Each person takes a turn sharing their favorite moment from the day, that's the high, and their least favorite moment, that's the low. Why don't we give it a go here? Think about it for a second and share with me, what was your high from today, your favorite moment? I'm so glad that happened. Now, what was your least favorite moment or your low from today? That's no fun. Sharing how our day went with our family is a wonderful way of celebrating the fun moments and expressing our feelings of frustration or sadness about the not so fun ones. Do you know it's okay to feel frustrated and sad? It is. Your family cares so much about you and wants to hear about your highs and your lows. Well, are you ready for tonight's story? I am too. In our last story, we learned how God gave the Israelites his 10 rules at Mount Sinai to show them how life works best. But he also had that other secret reason for giving them the rules, didn't he? God knew that it was impossible for the Israelites to obey all of the rules all the time. So why did he give them the rules when he knew they would fail? He did it to show everyone that we can't get into heaven and fix our relationship with him by obeying rules. Only Jesus is powerful enough to do that. And that's exactly what he did for us on the cross. God gave the Israelites his 10 rules so Jesus could obey all of them for us. Well, after packing up their tents, Moses and the Israelites walked out into the wilderness towards their new home called the Promised Land. But to get there, they had to go through the desert. Oh, and did I mention, they had to walk. There were no cars, no air conditioning, no shade, and no grocery stores. During the day, the hot sun would beat down on their heads and make the sand unbearably sizzling on their sandaled feet. At night, when the sun went down, the temperature would drop as much as 75 degrees. It would go from 100 degrees in the daytime, ooh, it's so hot, somebody give me a popsicle, please, to 25 degrees Fahrenheit at night. <laughs> All my face is blue and I think I've got frostbite on my mouth. God knew how hard this would be for the Israelites. So do you want to know what he did? Do you? Do you really? Really? Okay, I'll tell you. God created a gigantic heater and air conditioner in the middle of the desert. No, it's true. The Bible says that God, out of his love, put a gigantic flaming tower of fire in the sky at night to keep the Israelites warm and to give them light. And then during the day when the sun was so hot, God put a gigantic cloud above them that gave them amazing shade. How incredible is God? He kept the Israelites warm at night and cool during the day. But hot and cold were not the only problems the Israelites faced in the desert. Food was a big problem. You see, not much food grows in the desert, so the people couldn't find very much to eat. The millions of Israelites quickly mowed through their snacks that they brought from Egypt. And then, once all of the snack packs were gone in the juice boxes, they began to complain to God. God, we're hungry! Will you help us? The people whined. Now, have you ever complained to your parents because you didn't like the food that you had in the kitchen? Well, that's what they did. Only, it wasn't the food that was in the kitchen. There was no food in the kitchen left! 
God listened to the Israelites and said, don't worry, I'm already on it. The next morning, when the Israelites woke up, <sighs> and then wiped the sleep boogers out of their eyes and poked their heads out of their tents, they could not believe what they saw. The ground was covered with tiny pieces of bread. What is it? They all asked. It's your food. It's breakfast. Try it, God said with a smile. When the people picked it up off the ground and tasted it, their faces lit up. Mmm, this is so good, one person shouted. Someone else yelled, yum, it tastes like honey. God told the Israelites, this is one of the foods angels eat in heaven, and I'm going to feed you with it every day until you reach the promised land. And that's exactly what God did. The people called the miracle bread from heaven manna, which means, what is this? In their language called Hebrew. It took the Israelites 40 years. You heard me right. 40 years to walk and get to the promised land. And every day of those 40 years, God fed them with food from heaven kept them warm with the pillar of fire and cool in the day with the cloud. Church kids, do you see how well Jesus takes care of us? He loves you just as much as he loved the Israelites. When you're scared, Jesus cares. When you're hungry, Jesus cares. And when you feel lonely or confused, he cares and he wants to help you. We get to talk to Jesus anytime we want and ask him to help us and the people around us. And guess what? He does. Your God is the one who set the Israelites free and fed them and cared for them as they faced tough times. And he is doing the exact same thing for you. Why don't we talk to Jesus? Jesus, thank you for protecting us and taking care of us. You give us things we need today, just like you did for the Israelites. Remind us to ask you for help tomorrow when we need it, because you always answer. Thank you for loving us, Jesus. Amen. Have a wonderful night's sleep and a fantastic day tomorrow. And remember, ask Jesus to help you whenever you need it. I think you are the absolute best. And I can't wait to hang out with you tomorrow. Have a wonderful night's sleep and sweet dreams. Good night. <laughs>